to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> the uh, minutes. Uh, if there are no changes in the minutes, can I get a motion to adopt the minutes as uh, distributed? I'll, I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. <clears throat> motion carried. Citizens' comments. Do we have any citizens that have a desire to have any comments. Then we have. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. McArdle's not here. Mr. McArdle isn't here. I am here. Oh, oh, we we had a seat special for. I you. wasn't sure. I just <laughs> didn't see when I walked in the door. Well, could you want to come out of it? Okay. And sure. just tell them what we talked about. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, this is in uh, regards to the speed limit on Lamson Road. Um, I've lived in there for about 13 years now. Um, Back when I first moved in, I talked to some of the neighbors, and they said that they had attempted to have the speed limit lowered at one point. And I believe that from what I found out from Dina, it might have been done in 2004. Um, signatures were gotten in the petition. Um, I don't know what happened after that. I know that it didn't, it didn't follow through. <clears throat> um, in the last 13 years, I've seen traffic rise, and commercial traffic and uh, residential traffic through that road um, exponentially. And the safety concern that I have is the fact that people don't follow any sort of speed limit, not to mention the fact that there really isn't a speed limit posted to begin with. Um, if, if anybody read the email that I said or, or wrote to um, the town, um, my, state, my concern was basically um, commercial traffic and the fact that people don't abide by any speed limit. 70 miles an hour is not uncommon for people to drive down that road. I live at the bottom of the hill. Um, I can't count on my fingers and toes how many times I've come close to um, you know, losing my life because of uh, other people's reckless driving. Um, now that's not to say that everyone does it, but I think enough people do it where it's, it's a cause for concern for public safety on that road. Uh, the, the population is very dense. Um, to me, it seems like the right thing to do. I don't know if that anybody will listen or not, but I believe that it's something that should be addressed. And I don't know how to do it. I just spoke up after years and years of seeing it go down, and I'm like, you know, finally enough is enough. So that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I do have your uh, email, and I, I believe all the other uh, counselors have it, and I did read it. And I'm, I'm not saying that I disagree with you. In fact, you know, most of these things, I think, when citizens come up, um, you know, they have a valid point. Unfortunately, we don't, you know, there's a process that we have to go through, and we we don't control the speed at the Department of Transportation. And I think uh, Ms. Falcone uh, was, uh, was going to direct you through that and told you what you needed, and then... Uh, we're going to proceed with it. We're going to ask for that. Uh, yeah, we're going to ask for that. Yeah, we'll ask for that. I mean, and like we discussed, uh, anybody that wants uh, uh, to uh, have a speed study done, we'll, we'll proceed with it. You know, we, we're not certainly going to stand in anybody's way. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we have very little um, uh, authority <laughs> over or influence <laughs> over. Uh, what their decision is going to be, I think they're pretty on top. There might be there might be business influences that you don't you know that we don't I don't know about, and that's something yeah. I assumed at some point, but I, I have no proof of that, of course. But uh, anyways, I mean, you've been very cooperative, and it's, that's great. And I hope that maybe something will come of it. And if it doesn't, then at least I say I tried. Yeah, um, and that's that's all we can do. Okay, we'll help you in any way we can. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment. I, I fully support <clears throat> you and, and any citizen coming forth requesting a speed study, it's it's kind of frustrating that it's New York State that determines whether that happens or not. But what's always curious to me about these things is, because I, I drive on these roads, not a lot, but often enough to just wonder how did this happen. But for Plank Road, um, if you're familiar with that road uh, behind, uh, you know, just parallel to Route 31, um, as well as Route 321, this is the one I don't understand at all. It has a speed limit of 35 miles an hour. Um, there are straightaways on 321 that you can see for miles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I don't know what we can do to encourage the state to take a look by comparison to some other roads that are in communities similar to the community that's, that's off of Lampson Road. 
yes, you're right. There's a lot of houses on Mimes Road in that community um, um, just across from Phoenix Flower Farm. Um, so my brother, my brother lives in that building. <clears throat> so and they're 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 they're. I consider the neighbors, and they have all about voice their concerns as well. So I, I don't know what we do when we act because I've never done one. You guys have, but when we sub submit a request to the state, do we get to editor? Do we get to add any kind of editorial comment? And if we do get that chance, we ought to add those things. Oh, by comparison. I, I have, yeah, I've, I've, um, I've added some things <laughs> that I thought would be appropriate. Yeah, I mean, I think for example, if there was um, an accident there or tractor trailer, a close call of a child, or whatever, I, I, I always put that in to the letter. I probably should have counted them. Sorry, I was speaking to the microphone before. Uh, last year, I made a call to the county, um, or whoever does the, the grass and the size of the, of the roads. I'm at the end of my drive, and I live at the bottom. I live right next to the flower farm. I'm, they're my neighbors. So I'm at the bottom of the hill, and I'm out there getting my mail, and all of a sudden, I see the, the guy cut the grass on the, on, the, on the shoulder going by me. And I'm psyched because now I can see up the road. Well, I'm up the road, and over the, over the top of the hill, doing about 65, 75 miles an hour, is a tanker truck. And he's 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 screwed. He doesn't. He, there's nothing. There's no way he can stop. He hits the brakes, but there's no way he can stop before he's going to take out that tractor. And the guy's sitting on it. Um, but luckily, there was no traffic coming the other way. He was able to go around. But if that track, if there was traffic coming the other way, there was going to be a fatality right there. And I was literally mortified watching it. And that's no, that's saying something. That was, that was a bad one. That's probably the worst one I've ever seen. And we can get 911's uh, records to see if there were any accidents on that road. So we'll, we'll do that as well. See how many accidents the last year there were on that road. It's crazy stuff. I mean, like I said, it's a shot. it might be a shot in the dark, but uh, I think it's everybody, anyone that lives on that road that I know, I would be hard pressed to think that there's one single um, person on that street that wouldn't say, I would be all for it. Even if it's 45, and it probably should be 40. And, and you know, and in light of things, you know, I, I did a little study myself and drove from Wright's Corners to Phoenix going 45 miles an hour instead of 55 miles an hour, and I saved about 30 seconds. So it's not a matter of, you know, got to get there faster or, you know, is commercial traffic going to be interrupted by this? I don't believe so. So, just saying. Anything else? We'll get it going. All right, thanks very much for your time. I appreciate it. Sure. Are we all set? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a nice night. You too. Anyone else? Sure. Road. I understand you want to go from Wright's Corners to Phoenix on Lamson Road for the speed limit study? That's what Mr. McCarville is requesting, yes. All right. I would suggest you extend it further west to include the burned area on the corner. There's a horse farm, there's a auction house and some other activities at the auction house and a mechanic and take it down another quarter, half a mile to the west for a minimum. Um, what we can do is we can request an area of speed study. That's why I put area mm -hmm. um, and they do the whole, they don't just do like the stretch of like what I put in. So they're gonna do that whole area. But if, if you know where that burned area, if you know the mile marker where that burned area is. Well, the dairy is on the corner, but you approach it, turn in, and it's three or 400 feet from the intersection. So there's a lot of in and out traffic right there. So if I put the address, all right, so if I put the address of the burned area. Yeah. But I'm saying quarter to half a mile further west from the intersection at Wright's Corner. Okay. If we're gonna if we're gonna ask for one, we can include that. That's yeah. Dinko as far as Dinko Road, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, supervisor's comments. <coughs> um I'll comment on, we've been getting uh, numerous emails regarding opening the spray park. And if you listen to the uh, tape of uh, our work session tonight, we had uh, a lengthy discussion on um, the opening the spray park, both for and against. And um, there wasn't enough uh, support from the board members to uh, get that open. Now, I can say for myself, um, the reason I, I would love to open that, and uh, the Parks Commissioner and I had uh, numerous discussions uh, over the last six weeks. We've been trying to find ways to 
uh, open that, but <clears throat> both he and I agree, we couldn't find a safe way to open that up. And in my mind, if we can, at least personally, I'm speaking for myself now, um, if we can't open that up safely, then I couldn't vote to open that up. So I just wanted to comment on uh, my position on that. Mr. Moore. Oh, you want to do wrong? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just worried about skipping okay. once we go this way. Well, the only thing I'm going to comment is we'll, I'd like to comment on the discussion regarding the spray park that we had during the work session. Um, it's frustrating uh, sometimes watching the news. Uh, I feel like we're not always getting the full story. With that being said, I didn't feel comfortable um, with everything that's going on right now, taking the risk, the liability of opening the spray park. Um, something that I think is going to be taken advantage of in the future. It's going to be a benefit for our parks. I just didn't see it working out right now. So that, that's the way I, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. That's all I have to say. Good. Uh, first, I just want to say welcome back to those of you who came in. It's good to have an audience again. Um, and then uh, I would also like to congratulate the class of 2020. School's out, um, not the kind of senior year that this class was expecting, um, but a lot of people, a lot of organizations stepped up to the plate to try to make, you know, try to make your year, and your, uh, the end of your year, at, at the best that it could be. In the end, um, it's your own perseverance, positive attitude, and persistence that will, that will guide your life. So. Stick with it, use these experiences to your benefit. Congratulations. Uh, I'll echo what uh, Mr. Moore just said. It's nice to have uh, an open meeting again. Um, it's uh, spread out as it may, may be, but it's a start. It's been really lonely the last several months just uh, not having uh, Mr. Rusnik and, and other folks. Um, Kevin and, and others uh, not commenting and not being there listening, so I'm, I'm really happy that we're there. Um, not specifics of the spray park, but it's just so frustrating to not know what's going on with this disease, with this, with this virus. Um, and what the biggest unknown, I guess, I'm not, I'm not speaking with any medical knowledge, is, you know, is there going to be a resurgence or whatever the term might be? And, you know, it, it, it's curious to me what will happen with the groups that have gotten together without social distancing and without masks to see. And, and, and in a way, it's an experiment that could, in fact, benefit all of us if we find out that no resurgence takes place. Um, in which case, um, you know, until some protocol is found to do something about this illness, I, I don't know what's going to change. I mean, it's not going away. Um, but fortunately, the number of incidents has, has plummeted, uh, and maybe that's because of all the protocols that are in place. Um, um, and the second thing I wanted to say is, and this is speaking strictly from myself personally, not on behalf of the town, you know, I'm really happy to and, and proud to live in, in a place called Baldwinville in the town of Lysander, and, um, and kind of grimacing about what's happening in the rest of the country. Um, you know, we don't have a police force in the town of Lysander, but we obviously rely on the state troopers, the village of Baltimore, the Onondaga County Sheriff, and, and sheriffs and, and, and others uh, throughout the community. And I, for one, am very proud of our police force. Um, I don't know how a community or society exists without police. Um, and I know, obviously, folks personally, one to my right, uh, they are good people. And um, thank goodness and thank God that we have them. I just wanted to say that as a public figure. Thank you. Mr. Kudarowski. I too also want to congrats to all the seniors out there that graduated this year. It had to be a tough year for you. And also, it's nice to see familiar faces in the crowd again. Uh, we can put your cutouts away, you know, since you're here now live. So, uh, you know, it's nice to see you here, guys. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> The uh, department had reports. Mr. Yeager. Um, uh, sorry for the last minute uh, addition to the agenda today with the uh, ad for bid for the uh, uh, Radisson or the, the drainage district uh, 
swale mowing and uh, uh, pond maintenance. Uh, it's my mistake. I didn't realize we didn't have a meeting on July 2nd. So, uh, and I want to make sure that we get those bids open by the middle of July so we can have a, a contractor under contract by August when we want to do the work. Um, that's pretty much all. I forgive you, Al. What's that? I forgive you. <laughs> we do this every year, right? We did, we do, well actually we, uh, the last time we did it was two years ago because I had an 18 month extension clause in it and, and the contractor agreed to do it, uh, the carryover rate from uh, 2018. So this is the first time we've done it since 2018. And we do try to get the uh, agenda out as soon as we can and as complete as we can, but it's like any other business, things come up and when things come up and we have to take care of them, we add them to the agenda, but we do our best to try and get everything out by Tuesday. I mean, we, we work hard at that, and then things come up, so uh, we have to add them in. Mr. Rubizigo. <coughs> okay. Mr. Rowley. Nothing tonight, thank you. Nothing tonight. I'm all this, uh, I have just one more thing on this um, <coughs> thing that we just talked about, this, this the cutting the swell. Is there a date on this? Yes. The bid opening is uh, no, no. I mean, for how long the, the, the it goes for? What they're bidding on for what term? Yeah, in the contract documents, okay. uh, yeah, it's a day rate contract. Um, we're going to have uh, uh, a three man crew and then a single man crew with a brush hog uh, and tractor for for mowing ponds. I think that'll be a little more efficient okay. than, than having a three man crew this okay. this time. Right. And we'll have a minimum. It, right now, I have it written up as a, a minimum of 15 days work with the three man contract and uh, five days work with the, the single contract. Okay. Okay, then we'll say, Yo. That's, that's why everybody's spread mask. out with mask on. Yeah, yeah with your mask on, you don't know. <laughs> with the hair in my mask, I don't know how anybody would know. I'm sorry, I apologize. That's okay. Um, back in, um, in starting in March and in May, we sent out a total of 4,600 notices of assessment change. Um, that were either preliminary or tentative. Um, during March and April, I had phone, scheduled phone informals with approximately 130 property owners. Grievance day, as you know, was a little different because of the phone calls. Um, we had 85 property owners um, with assessment concerns on 105 properties total. Two were exemption issues. Um, 79 phone calls were made and attempted. Um, and at the end of the day, we actually had one gentleman that got two phone calls, and I still don't know how that happened. Um, but he called and um, left a message and said he'd be happy to um, speak with someone else if he needed to. Um, and they, um, the board reported that the phone calls were very well received. Uh, people were less intimidated. They, were, they, they talked more freely than they would normally do um, in front of um, the entire board. Um, 26 were paperwork only. All of the information in the letters have gone out. Uh, we're finalizing the final assessment role now, and we're dealing with the state's um, tentative role exemption correction report, um, which facilitates going through every single printout. There's approximately 80 for the town of Lysander, and we have to either change or remove exemptions as per the New York State Department of Taxation's um, determination for the enhanced star and or basic star exemption. And questions from the board? Question on veggie list. Um. Well, we start, and it, it wasn't too bad. Um, we started out kind of slow um, because I had to, the, the board, this was all brand new for them. Uh, and so the first, the morning session was a little challenging because we had some technical issues. We couldn't get into the offices where the phones were. And um, by the time we got them all up and running with their list of property owners, we're a little bit behind schedule. And then the phone started ringing in the assessor's office. I haven't gotten my call. And, but after things got going, it, it went a little better after that, so. How many people, uh, or don't you know this yet, about the enhanced star either gained or lost? Um, well, actually, I looked at, um, I, of those 80 people, um, I'm, there were about 10 that relinquished their exemption. 
Um, I'm not sure why. I'm guessing they're over the income yeah, to get the exemption the yeah. and they're acting for the check. Um, we had um, a bunch of them that were already taken off because the properties had sold. And there were a number of them that were over the income for the enhanced star exemption last year that now qualify for the enhanced this year. I would say probably 20 <coughs> of those um, were people that didn't qualify last year, but now they do this year, so we've changed it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hoping the state gets a, a little more right this year than they did last year and, and less wrong. Now, uh, you said some of the people really like that phone in. Um, yes. They, they, do, you think, do you think that's something, when we go back to doing it the regular way, is that something you can incorporate? Or? Um, I don't think so, um, because this year it was a special circumstance because the governor signed an executive order in late April um, suspending um, in-person hearings with the, the Board of Assessment Review. Um, but normally it's, it's, it's a public meeting, like the, the town board meeting. It's meant to be a public meeting. And any property owner can come in. I've only had maybe one or two in 20 years um, that came in and actually sat and listened to the procedure. Um, otherwise, people just come in for their own appointment or they come in a little bit early to wait their turn and then they all leave. Um, but the law, unless it's changed permanently, the law does not allow us that latitude. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I miss anybody else? Ms. Clark? Oh, no, you're not in the park. Now, <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to appoint you to something. Right. Um, okay. Move on to the regular agenda items. Uh, may get a motion to authorize the town clerk to request an area of speed study from uh, Route 48, formerly Wright Corners, to the beginning of the bridge in Phoenix. Um, we're, um, uh, we're gonna. So do we need to yeah, amend we, that? Well, we can just <coughs> say um, from. Whatever that address is, a bridge area. Whatever that address is. Well, why don't we say uh, a half mile west of the intersection of Williamson Road and Route 48 yeah. to the Phoenix Bridge? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Okay, perfect. You might want to state in the resolution that it's Lampson Road for people that would read this and don't know that that's Lampson Road. Because it doesn't say that. Yeah. So, I'm going to change it to. Uh, an area of speed study from a half a mile west of Lamson Road. Oh, that's what, 48. West of 48. West of 48. Oh, west of, okay, I'm sorry. West of Route 48. On Lamson Road. On Lamson Road. To the beginning of the bridge in Phoenix. Can I get a motion? I'll do it. I'll say. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. May you get a motion to approve the budget transfers as presented by the town controller on the attached budget modification request form. I'll move it. I'll second it. Um, Mr. Rowley and I um, have had some discussions. What we'd like to do instead of doing all the budget transfers at the end of the year, what we'd like to do is as we get um, things that need to be transferred and we, we get a few of them, we like to do them throughout the year. That's why you're seeing this like this and I think gives people more of an opportunity to uh, see what we're doing throughout the year as opposed to seeing a whole bunch of things at the end of the year. So that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. And just a clarification, David, the uh, unrestricted fund balance to, to uh, purchase the Nosmich property, is that what we plan to do all along to <coughs> There was no other monies that we had identified. No. Actually, the previous board, uh, towards the end of the year, did a resolution when we authorized that we were going to purchase the property, that that's where we were okay. going to, how we were going to fund it. Yep. So now that it's actually happened. Good. And uh, speaking on that, uh, knows which property, the 82000 I was speaking with um, the... Um, Minority Leader Barkley stopped in today and he dropped off uh, several gallons of uh, 
hand sanitizer to us, and uh, we also had a conversation about um, a fifty thousand uh, dollar grant that uh, he had obtained for us, and he uh, felt pretty secure that uh, that was going to come through, which would help defray some of the costs on that uh, that property. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. May I get a motion to waive the permit fee of $300 for a fireworks display on behalf of the Village uh, of Phoenix for their food and music at Bridge House nightlife event with fireworks at dusk with the expectation duration of 10 minutes for property located at 9354 River Road, Phoenix, New York. This event is anticipated to occur sometime in July 2020. I'll move that. I'll second. Any discussion? I have a couple questions on this. <clears throat> Doesn't our code enforcement officer have to inspect this? Yes. He does? So all, every time that I remember, we're always waiving this fee. Why should we waive this fee if our code enforcement officer has to do work out there? We had that discussion when we first waived it. It was about five or six years ago, and we felt it was just another. It was a community doing a community doing an event within their community that obviously serves ours as well. It wasn't a private event, so we felt. You know, why should we tax uh, another government, or in this case, the fire department? Shouldn't we at least recoup our cost? Tim's work out there because now we're paying Tim to do something pro bono, so to speak. I mean, it does benefit Lysian residents as well. I mean, all those residents of West Phoenix get to enjoy that display as well. But it just seems to me, I, I don't mean to be the dead horse, but we keep waving all these fireworks fees, then why don't we just remove it off the books out of the codes then? Is there another one? Because this is the only one that I recall that we have. Uh, Radis as well. I think I asked a couple years ago, and I'm trying to recall Tim's answer, but I remember the conversation. And I know that they do generate revenue with this fee, um, but I can't recall how much, because I remember having that conversation with them, too. Um, I think most of the revenue that's generated is when they have events at Timberbanks and at Fireworks, the parades and stuff, when they have the, the tent up there. Obviously, that is there this summer, so. Right, but Tim still has to go out there and inspect it, right? So, I, mean, I look at this no different than an intermunicipal cooperation that you know Tim will help in the village of Ballersville and we'll get some help. And you know, it's a cooperative thing, and you know, I think for the it's, it's just one of those things that you just say to another government, No, you know, we're not going to charge you. But that's all right, it's my personal. More discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, and I'm an aye. I'm an aye. Uh, motion carried. May get a motion to approve the summer hours for Lysander Town Hall, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. beginning Monday, June 22nd, 2020, and ending September 4th, 2020. I'll move it. I'll second it. Okay. Um, I actually uh, propose this to the town employees because being here after four o'clock, it's like a ghost town. You almost, no, I, I can't remember seeing anybody after four o'clock in the last, well, obviously we haven't been open that long either, but um, I think that summertime, most other towns have summer hours because people are out doing other things. So I thought that, uh, with our employees to have them come in a little earlier and then leave a little earlier. It doesn't hurt any of the residents and uh, it's, uh, uh, we're still getting the same amount of, of work out of our employees. And I think that, uh, you know, it's just a, a benefit that we can give to the employees that doesn't cost, doesn't hurt the uh, community and doesn't uh, cost anything to anybody. And the only one that I would ask is, Dina, what do you see at four o'clock? I, in a really long time, I haven't seen anything after four. Well, I mean, not the last couple of months. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> in the summer especially, it's it's pretty bad. It's dead from like 3.30 to 
most end of days. And did, didn't you do some Saturdays as well? I did. Um, when I first started here, I did. Yes, I remember. I think, did I do that in September or November maybe or something? But for people who couldn't come during the week, yeah. I mean, that's my only concern yeah. is, I mean, you, we, the folks that come here to do work are obvious, not obviously, but more likely, more than likely they're working. So but I have what? to, well, I mean, I, if somebody said, hey, I'm going to come in at 10 after 4, I would obviously stay. I mean, I'm not, you know what I mean? So, uh, but I've seen a lot of people actually waiting at the door but between 8.30 and 9 for the door to open, more than I've seen people come in from 4 to 4.30. So, uh, yeah. many more people, I mean, I can't tell you how many, but I mean, I can say the same thing, that we have seen people waiting to get in, but you know, you usually don't see them waiting to, mm -hmm. Uh, at four o'clock. And I think anybody would, anybody that works here would accommodate anybody who wanted to come in after four to do something. I, you know what I mean? So is there, again, I don't want to belabor this, but what about opening earlier? Then? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What about 8.30 to 3, or 8 to 3.30? I was right. going to say, I, I start seeing, I'm I here at 7.30 every time. day. I start seeing people pull into the parking lot around 8 o'clock. I think for summer hours, who wouldn't want to be out at by 3.30, right? Coming at 8 to leave at 3.30. Well, no, you would make it from 8 to 4 because they still have to work an 8-hour day. Well, 8. Um, no, it would be 8, eight to 3.30. Oh, 3.30. Yeah, yeah, is that it? Is that right. So they were yeah. half hour lunch. Yeah, half hour lunch. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, absolutely. But, but any of those I types of eight, hours, I, you know. I personally, would, I would like 8 to Eight to three thirty for summer hours. I mean, I don't have to work. Home. You guys do. Have you brought this up with the employees? That do uh, that I, I brought up th these hours. I brought up these hours, and to the person, they were right in the skull. I don't want to micromanage. If you think, it's yeah, I don't right. either. Yeah, whatever. Do what you think is right. Hey, Al Nelson, seven to three.
to get a motion to authorize the town clerk to advertise for bids for the town of Lysander Swale and Stormwater Pond maintenance project bids for the project must uh, for the project must be received by the town of Lysander clerk no later than 8 a.m. July 15, 2020. Copy of the bid advertisement is attached. Uh, it's 10 a.m. What? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. How's uh, she going to know? Later than 8 a.m. What did I say? 10 a.m.? No, you said 8 I said eight, yeah. and I read it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought I read it. I was looking at it. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to see if anybody was listening. <laughs> I won't be here at eight that day. All right. Okay. So we'll change that to ten a.m. I'm going to get a motion. I'll move it. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, any new business from the board members? No, no. Okay. Anybody have any need for an executive session? Okay. Then I have a motion to adjourn at 7.35. I'll move it. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay.